Successful people learn how to make their mind work for them. I'm David Nagel, and this is the Successful Mind Podcast. Here's, the, like, one of the, here's one of the questions that I'm getting is if I didn't keep my commitment, what do I do? Honestly, I, like you want to do this the right way, you start over. The day that you don't keep the commitment, you go all the way back to the beginning and start over. The reason for this is because if you're going to change the paradigm, you need a 90-day foundation to change the habit. So you have to start over. So if you're if you're a person who has broken the commitment, and you want to be honest to yourself and really do this to make it work, go all the way back to day one and start there and just start over. I mean, that is the way to do it. You cannot shortcut this, okay? They're, they're, when we're talking about human potential and really getting this right for ourselves so that this is no longer a problem in your life and you're really able to leverage the foundation that you built, you want to do it right. You, you want to do it right. I mean, I spent the first 20 plus years of my life trying to shortcut it and it was just a disaster. So I, I, mean, I want to tell you a story. I want to see if I can explain something here that I think may really help everybody um, when it comes down to the ideas of what we're doing. When I, when I made my very first change um, and you've all heard the story, I was, I was on a forklift. I was miserable. I was making 20000 a year, couldn't pay my bills, car was repossessed, went bankrupt, had to leave our apartment in the middle of the night with my wife and kids, lived next door to a drug dealer. Like I, I was so ashamed of myself. Um, I would cry in my car on the side of the road because I didn't know how to get out of my own way. And I, I took a guy that... I admired the guy that owned the company that I worked for. And what I really started to do was emulate him. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I was only focused on this idea about how do I change my attitude? Because that was the message that God gave me in the back of that trailer that night in the middle of the morning in February in Chicago. It was change your attitude. But when I looked back years later, when I looked back and I was like, what the hell did I actually do? that gave me such profound results in such a short period of time. I did two things that were very important to understand. One, I started behaving like the person who was already getting the results. Now, like I said, I did not know that that's what I was doing. Number two, because his behavior was in harmony with the laws of the universe and in harmony with the laws of success, I immediately started getting those results. Now, if you think about how profound that is, because I did not have any of the qualifications that most of us think that we need in order to be able to get those results. I thought that I was going to have to go back to school. If you remember the story, I was sitting down figuring out, is there a way for me to go back to school? But I didn't have the time or the money to go back to school, right? There was no internet then. You had to literally go to to the building, you know, uh, go to night school or something. I didn't have the time or the money to be able to do it. I did not have uh, a solid work record that would have given me a better job. I didn't have any skill sets beyond driving a truck or driving a forklift. So in my mind and and the, in the mind of the other adults that were around me that I was asking advice for, from, uh, the idea was, well, you screwed it up. You better just work hard where you are. And when you get an opportunity to go back and get educated again, you better take that opportunity. But it really looked grim. Like it, it really looked grim from the place that I was sitting and, and nobody really had any good advice. And when I decided to take just three things from his personality, from his attitude that I could witness, I could see this. In my uneducated mind, in my emotionally immature mind, I could pick these three things that stood out to me that were different to me. I put my whole self in the vibration of success, my whole being. And I started acting as if I was that person right from the very first day that I made the commitment. And I never went back on that commitment, not one day, not one day. 
I'm like, I will change these three things and I will do this for a year. That was the, the commitment that I made with myself. And to my astonishment, I got the results in 30 days. I tripled my income in 30 days. And I was like, whoa, whoa. But then it took me seven and a half years to figure out what the hell I actually did. Uh, because I didn't know. It just did. It was not like two plus two here. I mean, it, it was not adding up. This was not supposed to happen. But here's the thing that's important. The universe does not hold your past against you, right? Like other people do and like we do for ourselves. It does not hold your past against you. It does not matter how bad or how much you screwed up yesterday. The universe doesn't care. It does not hold a record. What it does is it immediately responds to whatever you're putting out today. And I started acting and behaving and thinking within the framework of how the laws work universally to bring about success. And immediately I started getting those results. I didn't have to go back to school. I didn't have to change who I knew. I didn't have to do all of this work to erase my past and forgive myself, I immediately started behaving as if that's the way it was right now. And I got the results. And what was astonishing to me was that it never changed. It never went backwards. Now, years later, when I was in a seminar, I heard my mentor say, when you, when you gain this level of awareness, you don't ever lose it. You know, you don't ever lose it. It's not something that gets erased. It's not memory. It's awareness. You're, you're becoming aware of something about yourself and about life that you were, you were not aware of before. So I was progressively getting better and better and better. But here was something that I learned along the way. And it was, it was, very, it was a very interesting part of my education. I was, I was limiting myself to some degree in the success that I could have. And the way that that was happening was that I chose a vehicle that had limits, meaning I basically got another job. It was a different job, but it was another job nonetheless. And that job, now not all jobs are like this, but the job that I was in was basically trading time for money. So I was limited by the scope of that job and what it could actually bring me as far as an income uh, and what it could bring me as far as security and what it could bring me as far as a future. I was limited by that vehicle, by the parameters of that vehicle. So I'm working in, the, in that job for a little while and I set my mind on, I wanna advance within that company. Now, the company that I worked for was owned by a very large Irish family, lots of brothers and sisters. And nobody had ever been promoted outside of the family within the ranks of management or the upper tiers of the company. It was all family. So when I started to uh, kind of put it out there a little bit that I was interested in growing, I was immediately told by my boss, you know, they've never promoted anybody uh, outside of the family here. A matter of fact, my immediate supervisor was the first person that they had ever hired from another company. And he actually kind of came in as a consultant originally, but they made him, he took the job as a, as a supervisor and he was my immediate supervisor. And I said, you know, I said, well, I, you know, I, said, well, I don't know what that means, but I would still like, if there's any opportunity here to be promoted, I would really like to work myself into a way for that to happen. I don't know if I have to go to school or take classes or, or whatever. And he said, well, he said, let me, let me put it out there. He's like, they really think a lot of you, you've done, amazing things just as a truck driver here. They've never seen anything like it before. Um, let me see what they think. Now, I lived 100 miles away from work, where I worked. I had to drive 100 miles one way every day to go to work. And I made a commitment that not only would I be on time every day, but that I would be early, that I would be early. I was setting higher standards for myself. So it took generally 90 minutes for me to get to work. I would usually leave three hours early to go to work, two and a half to three hours early, depending on weather. You know, I was driving from, I, was, I lived out near uh, Rockford, Illinois. I was basically driving into Chicago 
every day. And Chicago's like any other major city, the, the, the traffic is horrible. And you know, we, the old saying in Chicago is, there's two seasons in Chicago, you have winter and you have construction. Okay, <laughs> that's the that's the way it is, and it's you know in in the in the summer months it's a lot of construction. So when uh, when when my boss went to the owner and the owner's son and said David would really like to be considered for a, a managerial position, they were they were like, oh, that's really cool, you know, like he's he's uh, you know he's showing he's, he's he is showing some initiative here. They, but the owner specifically said this, listen, the guy lives a hundred miles from work. This is to be promoted into management is much more of a commitment than just driving the truck. He's got a good job. Tell him, you know, we really appreciate it, but just stay where he is. He has a good, he has a good career here. And he, they came back and they told me that. <clears throat> and I said, is that the only objection? And he said, to my knowledge, that's the only objection. So I knew that I was going to have to go in and sell myself on this. And I said, well, can you get me a meeting with the owner? He said, I can do that. So I had to go in and sell myself to the owner. And I went in there and I said, I said, Jack, you know, I'm always early to work. It, I'm, I'm proving that the, that the distance and the time is not an issue for me. And he said, yeah, but you're young. You've got a lot of energy. You know, if you get older, you, you know, this type of thing, you've got kids and I said, Jack, I'm 100% committed. I said, if you give me the opportunity, I'll, you know, I will show you that this will never be an issue. It will, my drive to work or the time that it takes for me to go back and forth will never be an issue. And this is what he said to me. So this is the first time I'm promoted there. This is what he says to me. He says, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can't go back. And I said, I'm, I said, I don't follow up. I don't understand what that means. He said, you so I, he says, if I promote you and it doesn't work out, you can't go back to driving a truck here. And I thought that was weird. Now, I understand it a lot differently now, but where I was then, I, that was not computing in my mind. And he said, you don't understand that, do you? And I said, no, I, I really don't. Like, if I'm doing a really great job at this and I'm an asset to the company, why couldn't I go back? He said, because you don't want to be a truck driver. He said, and I don't want somebody in a job that they don't want to be in. And you're showing that you don't want to be in that job. He said, you can't go back. And that was scary. That was really scary. Number one, I didn't know if I could do it. I thought I could do it. I was pretty sure in my bones I could do it, but I hadn't proved that I could do it yet. I didn't know if I had what it took to be a manager, to be able to, to, to manage uh, uh, 40 really hard guys. Like, I, you know, there was going to be some growth there for sure. So... I took, I took the position. Now, I got promoted all the way to the top of the company within that seven-year period of time and put in charge of expanding the company across the country. And every single time I went in for the promotion talk, he said the same thing to me. He said, you know, you can't go back. He said, you need to be sure that you want this because you can't go back. And I was rolling the dice every time, right? Because I had to prove myself I had to show that I could not only fulfill that role, but also expand it beyond where it was. They weren't hiring me to just keep things the same. They wanted me to expand it. So I had to prove that I could do that every single time. And it was the same deal every time. You can't go back. You can't go back. So then when I, when I started to work with my mentor, it was very interesting that the rule was the same. He basically said, if the day that you tell me you're not going to do what I'm telling you to do, or you're, uh, uh, you know, put up a stink about it, or you're not going to perform, I'm done. I'm not going to coach you, and you can't go back. You don't get a second chance. And I thought to myself, I've heard this before. I've heard this before. But I still did not understand fully this concept of you can't go back. And why it was so relevant in, in my learning, in my growth. And I think to this day, one of the reasons is, is because when you make a commitment to do something, the moment that you go back, you have to start all the way over again. You, you're literally programming your mind to fail. So it's very much like in this book, in, in Think and Grow Rich. When I started to get into this book, 
Hill talked about the idea of burning the ships, of being in the mindset and the commitment to win no matter what. It's either win or die. Now that seems, you know, uh, a little extreme for the average person. And it, it actually, it is. But this isn't why we're here. We're not here to be average. That This is the rule if you want to be above average. If you don't want to be mediocre, if you want to break the chain of causation in your family lineage, if you want to do something really magnificent, you're playing by a different set of rules here. Because you can't go back. And here's the damnedest thing about it. Once you start to become aware of your potential, meaning you're really actually living in that potential every day, you're seeing the money come in, you're seeing the growth, you're seeing your business grow, you're seeing everything get better, that awareness changes you forever. And you, you, you become aware of something very profound. And if you've ever seen me do an in-depth teaching on the terror barrier, I talk about it in this teaching. And it's the idea that there's part of our mind that wants to go back to the, to the safety and the security of the ignorance that safety and security is actually real. So what it's removing is you're removing the ignorance of something that wasn't true to begin with. But when we're ignorant, we can live in the feeling of safety in that ignorance because it's ignorance. You don't know that you don't know. But once that's removed, it's over. So the only place to go from there is forward. Now, how do we ever get that feeling back? Well, we get that feeling back by performance. We get that feeling back by what we started with in A Course in Miracles. The truth about you is so lofty that nothing unworthy of God is worthy of you. Choose then what you want in these terms and accept nothing that you would not offer to God as wholly fitting for him. Your commitment needs to be at that level. It needs to be at that level. Here's the one suggestion that I would make. And this is only for the people that are struggling keeping the commitment. You need to back your, down, your commitment down to a level that you'll know that you keep. For those of you that are keeping the commitment, I want you to stretch for that damn goal as much as you possibly can, okay? But if you can't get yourself to do it, it doesn't matter. You got to back it down and you have to reframe, re reframe your mind so that you will learn to keep the commitment. Then after you've done that and you've rebuilt that foundation, you can stretch for whatever goal that you want and we'll be here for that also. But the idea is that we build that commitment so that in the 90 days, when we're in a place where it's uncertain, where we're scared, where we don't know if it's going to happen, whether we're tired, something comes into our life that jacks us up a little bit that we're going to keep the, the commitment regardless. That's the idea, okay? Because you have, to, you have to get to the place where you're setting goals in your mind and you're like, no, nah, the goal's set. I'm not, I can't go back. I can't go back, right? It's, it, it's, not a, it's not a do over thing because it's a different energy. If you have one foot in safety, you're not putting forth the, the correct energy that you need to manifest what you want. It's really interesting. And um, like you could talk to, you could even talk to, to Steph or Sarah about this. And they'll tell you that when they went through this transformation for themselves, it was fascinating that when they put themselves all the way out on that edge, it always happened, no matter what it was. But they always had to go beyond what they thought that they could do. Maybe it was another phone call. Maybe it was another email. Maybe it was calling another person that said no and asking them again. It was up, up leveling that commitment every single time. If you're not getting what you want in life, it's because you're not putting out what you need to manifest it. You've got a split energy going on there, okay? So you know, I want to get into you, you squared so everybody can get on with their day, okay? We are at suspend disbelief. Act as if your success is for certain. Now, if you're going to act as if your success is for certain, the one thing that you're absolutely going to do is you're going to be 100% committed. The Joseph Campbell quote, the cave that you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. And for some of us, it's commitment. The cave is the commitment. 
instead of holding back because you don't have hard proof that you can make a quantum leap, see if you can end up with evidence proving that you can't. Just make the jump. Act as if your success is guaranteed and then see which set of ideas you should believe in. Your mindset for the moment may be flawed by doubt or skepticism. The idea of making a quantum leap in your performance, jumping from your present level of achievement to one of several stages higher in one bold stroke is an alien idea. You have not been trained to think that way. You may have definite reservations about the possibility that you can make such an exponential improvement at all, particularly with less effort and in a very abbreviated time frame. The experts generally agree, though, that people typically use only about 10% of their true potential. If we accept that argument, and even if there were no other resources outside of yourself that you could bring to bear on the situation, you still could do 10 times as well as you've been doing. You could still do 10 times as much as you've been doing. Your skepticism, which you presume is based on rational thinking, and an objective assessment of factual da data about yourself is rooted in mental junk. Your doubts are not the product of accurate thinking, but of habitual thinking. Years ago, you accepted flawed conclusions as correct. You, and you began to live your life as if those warped ideas about your potential were true and ceased to hold uh, experiment in living that brought you many breakthrough behaviors as a child. Now it's time for you to find the faith that you had uh, in yourself before. If you want to be skeptical of some ideas that truly deserve to be called into question, challenge the thoughts and beliefs that have argued against you taking a quantum leap. Well, a quantum leap. Put those old inhibiting ideas to the test by going for it with every single thing that you've got. For right now, just suspend disbelief. You don't have to be convinced that you can succeed in making the quantum leap, leap, but don't keep believing those old ideas that you've been carrying around, around about your own personal limits. If, we will, if it will make it easier, hold off for a while on believing anything. Now, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that right now. You need to believe in you and what we're doing. You need, to have that, you need to have that belief. Just act like you have complete faith. Merely do what you would do if you knew you were going to succeed. Behave like you have total conviction. Doubt is what does the most damage. And I agree with that. Don't give it any mental space. Proceed boldly and as if completely in, uh, inconceivable that you will experience anything other than a successful quantum leap. If you must doubt something, doubt your limits. Now, back to this book, back to Think and Grow Rich. There's something in here that I think you should make a study of. It's a little paragraph. And I would read it every day. Maybe even put it on a little card and carry it around with you. Um, it's profound once it really sinks in. And here's what it says. There is a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one is ready for a thing until he believes he can acquire it. The state of mind, the state of mind must be belief, not mere hope or wish. Open-mindedness is essential for belief. Closed minds do not inspire faith, courage, or belief. And then he says, remember, no more effort is required to aim high in life to demand abundance and prosperity than is required to accept misery or poverty. So in order to receive something, you have to believe it. That's what he's basically saying. And he's 100% accurate with this. Now, how do we get ourselves to believe something? This was a huge question for me. A huge question for me. How do I get myself to believe something? And... I remember that Proctor sat down with me and he said, you know, our belief is based on our evaluation of something. He said, typically what happens is if we will sit down and gather new information and reevaluate whatever it is that we're thinking about, we'll, there, we'll, we'll, we'll change our belief about that thing. 
you have to, anything that you have where you're verbally expressing what you don't want, you have to ask yourself, what is your belief that is causing you to verbally express what you don't want? Remember, yesterday I said, I needed to forgive my back, right? If I kept going, if I keep going around going, my back hurts, my back hurts, my back hurts, I'm not forgiving it. I'm confirming what I don't want. Why do I do that? Because I have an incessant need to express what it is that I'm experiencing. It's like the body has that need. Well, it's not just a need, it's scientific. An idea got moved from our conscious mind into our unconscious mind, our subconscious mind, and anything that gets moved into our subconscious mind must begin at once to express itself with and through the physical body. If I'm going to change that, I have to decide, choose how I'm going to change my thinking so that it moves into my subconscious mind and I'm expressing what I want, not what I don't want. We have to stop saying what we don't want. We have to discipline our mouth. And you're, you're, it's like you're going to feel it inside of yourself. Like everything is going to want to scream the thing that you're experiencing that you don't want or what's going wrong. You've got to just calm down and begin to express what you do want and only express what you do want. I started behaving as if those three attitudinal changes were already in me, like I had already mastered them. That's how I was behaving. Bam, just like that, the results started showing up. Because the universe can't not change a thing. Whatever you turn over to it, spirit is going to bring it right back into your life exactly as you turn it over. If your idea is fuzzy, your results will be fuzzy. If your ideas are confused, your results will be confused. If you've got a value conflict going on, you will see, uh, you know, it'll, it looks like, Everything looks great, right? Like how many of you have had somebody who's like, I'm going to buy, this is the person that's going to buy, and then they don't have any money. Then they don't buy. Then they don't return the email, right? That's all a reflection of our own internal junk. We want it, we want it, want it, but we doubt it. So what happens? We get somebody who says they're going to buy, and then they don't, right? It's a complete reflection of what's going on inside of ourselves. Okay, commitment, surrender to the way, the cave that you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. You can't go back. You can't go back. All we're doing is moving forward and we're doing it together. Thanks for listening to the Successful Mind Podcast. And if you like what you heard and you want to know more, go to davidnagel.com forward slash free stuff.